Hello, everybody. Hello, Nina. Where did you come from? <laughs> and welcome, Nina and everybody. Welcome to today's Boss Online activity, which is called The Great British Presentation. All of these amazing Boss Online students are going to be telling us about British sport, famous British people, British food, the royal family, British architecture, British politics, British music, British fashion, British myths, and British holidays, okay? So there is a lot to learn today about Great Britain. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we begin? Okay, cool. We're gonna begin with Samwele, who is going to talk about British sport. So one moment, guys. I'm going to mute everybody. Hang on, Samwele, I need to unmute you. Where are you? You're too fast. Um, hi, Samwele. Hi. Hello. Okay. Well, today I'm going to talk about British sports. Here's some history. After the period of power of the Puritan, in 1660, sports like cricket, horse racing and boxing became popular thanks to gambling. Uh, 1660 is also the year of the origin of professional team sport. Cricket became the most popular sport in the 18th century in upper class and in the most part of the empire. In public schools like Winchester and Eton were introduced some variants, some variants of the football. With the Football Association was introduced the first rules for what we call today football. In 1995, the Prime Minister John Mayer promoted British sport. And in, 12, uh, in 2012, London hosted the Olympic Games. And the most popular sport in, in the UK is football, with 46% uh, uh, of uh, uh, spectators in uh, TV. Then we have uh, rugby with 21% uh, and uh, with 18% tennis. Uh, the most important moment in football history for England is the win uh, of the World Cup in 1966. Also in the same year, Celtic won the European Cup, the predecessor of the Champions League, as the first club to win it. Here there is a quote. People who work together will win whether it be against complex football defenses or the problems of modern society. Uh, about rugby, rugby became popular in the 19th century. It was codified in 1861 and uh, England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland are called the home nations. The most important moment was uh, the win of the Rugby World Cup in 2003. Rugby players are either piano shifters or piano movers. Fortunately, I am one of those who can play a tune from Pierre Danus, a rugby player from France. Uh, tennis was originated in the United Kingdom between 1859 and 1865 during the monarchy of Erin VIII. London was the most pre prestigious tennis heaven, the Wimbledon Championship. You only live once, but you get to serve twice. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Samwele. There's me. One moment, please, guys. Unmute everybody. Thank you, Samwele. This was an excellent presentation, Samwele. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Samwele about British sport or comments? In, um, in Britain, Samwele, there are lots of people who still talk about winning the World Cup in 1966. It's like, yeah, we won the World Cup in 1966. And it's like, that was such a long time ago. People still talk about it today, as if it's today. 
All right. Any questions for Samuel? No. Great. We're going to move on next to Masha, who is going to tell us about famous British people. Let me mute everybody. One moment, please. Masha. Okay, Masha, you are now the presenter. Hello. I'm going to forget one name. Can you please remind me of it? The name that you will forget? Uh, no, one name. I cannot pronounce it. Brit British famous people. A Diana Princess. Diana Princess of Wales was a member of the British royal family. She was the first wife of Charles Prince of Wales, the heir apparent to British throne, and the mother of Prince William and Prince Harry. Hugh Grant. Did I say it right? Hugh. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Yes. Yeah. John Mungo Grant is an English actor and film producer. Grant has received a Golden Globe, a BAFTA, and an, an Horogary. Hon honorary. C honorary. C Caesar. Did I say it right? Caesar. Caesar. Yeah. For his Caesar. For his work, as of 2018, his films have grossed a total of nearly a U.S. three billion worldwide for 24 uh, um, theatrical reel. Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn was a British actress and who and humanitarian record as a film and fashion icon. Uh, she was. Um, can I be the next one? Because you know. I like Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, no, not because of this. Can I can I be the next one, please? Oh, come on, Michelle. You're nearly, you're in the middle. You're doing well. Don't worry. Thank you. You're doing a good job. Uh, I was, um, she was ranked by the American Film Institute as the third greatest female scene legend in Golden Age Hollywood and was in, included into International Best Dress List Hall of Fame. Oh, sorry. Simon Cowell. Simon Philip Cowell is an English television personality, entertainer, producer, and record executive. Queen Elizabeth II. <coughs> Queen Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, Queen is, um, Elizabeth II is Queen of U uh, United Kingdom and other com Commonwealth. Re um, uh, Elizabeth was, was born in London the first child of Duke and Duchess of York. Later, King George um, the uh, and Queen Elizabeth, and she was um, ex executed privately at home. Queen Victoria I. Queen Victoria, um, Victoria was Queen of the United Kingdom, um, in Great Britain and Ireland from uh, 12, um, June, uh, 1837, until her death. Uh, she adopted the additional title of Empress of India on um, 1st May, 1760. Uh, Known as Victorian era, her reign of uh, 64 years, 63. Bill Shankly. <laughs> Bill Shankly OBE was a Scottish football player and manager who is best known for his uh, time as manager of Liverpool. Shankly brought success to Liverpool, uh, gaining um, pro um, promotion to the, um, to the first division and uh, winning three um, uh, league championships of the uh, UEFI Cup. John Lennon. Mm -hmm. John Lennon MBE was in English singer, a songwriter, and peace activist, who gained worldwide fame as founder of co-lived voca vocalist and rhythm guitarist of the Beatles. His songwriter partnership with Paul McCartney remains the most success in musical history. Mm -hmm. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, mm, C-H-M-B-E is an English singer, songwriter, musician, composer, and record and film producer who gained worldwide as a as co-lived vocal and bassist on 
the Beatles, his song, uh, his songwriter partnership with John Lennon remains the most successful in history. George Harrison. Hey. George Harrison, MBE, was an English music a musician, a singer, songwriter, and music and film producer who achieved international fame as the lead guitarist of the Beatles. Ringo Starr. Hey. Sir Richard. <coughs> Starkey, MBE, knows professional as Ringo Starr in an English musician, singer, writer, and actor who gained worldwide fame as a drummer of the Beatles. Uh, I'm done, thank you, and sorry. Thank you very much, Masha, one second. Oh, thank you, Masha. Amazing. You've got Bill Shankly in there, you've got John Paul George and Ringo, some excellent famous Britons. Does anybody have any questions for Masha? Um, um, I have a question. Yes. Okay. What does MBE mean? Yeah, I mean, I have no idea. I know. It means member of the British Empire. It's an award which you receive from the royal family for outstanding contribution to something. So John and Paul, they, well, and George and Ringo, they received MBEs um, for outstanding contribution to music. Something else which is very interesting, I cannot find it. But my grandmother also received an MBE uh, 12 years ago because she received it for outstanding contribution to education. Now, I had a picture, but I can't find it. But I will find it and show you later when she received it. Okay. Actually, one minute. I know where this picture is. British. So did she meet the Queen? Well, on the day, this is true, that she was receiving her award, the Queen was sick. So she met, she received the award from um, Prince Charles. That's so good. I'll show you a picture now. Here. This is my grandmother. Oh, wow. Oh, I know that lady. How do you know my nan? I don't know, but I know that lady. Here she is. We were all very, very proud. Um, my family, um, not me, but my dad and my aunties and uncles, everybody could go in, inside Buckingham Palace to uh, meet the queen. The award. Okay, so any more questions for Masha? So the MBE is a special award which you receive from the royal family, usually the queen. Okay. Any questions? We will move on next to Leanne, who is going to tell us all about British food. So one moment, I will prepare you, Leanne, and mute. Leanne, you are now the... Pre oh, wait, Andrea is here again. Hang on. Okay, Leanne, you are now the presenter. All right. England... Uh, so... <laughs> England is famous for so many different kinds of delicious food. Um, like it's great breakfast. But today I'm going to present you three short facts about English food or food industry which you don't know. Mm. So first, 11 billion 760 million eggs are laid every year in the UK. Imagine how many pancakes you could make with so many eggs. Second, the UK is a real nation of farmers. 71% of the land is used for farming. Three, yet are 48 percent of all food important because the UK has a modern climate and that isn't perfect for every kind of food. Thank you very much. Very good, Leanne. Very interesting as well. Something that I didn't know there. Thank you very much, Leanne. Oh. Also, also very good, Leanne, because um, Usually people say British food is disgusting. It's very, very horrible. Really? And it's all very bad. Especially people Really? Yeah, especially people like Samuele and Octavia, um, who come to Bath and say, Oh, this is not real pasta. This is not a real pizza. No. I think that English 
uh, that English breakfast is very delicious. I think so too. Yeah. We don't eat this every day. Also, in Britain, I like this chopstick. It's like <laughs> in Britain, people think we eat fish and chips. This is not true. The only, Hello? The only people who eat fish and chips in the UK are tourists. So like, really? yeah, you go to, oh, let's go to Brighton. Let's go to eat fish and chips. And Masho, did you eat fish and chips in Brighton? Yeah. <laughs> we have in school. You, One moment. Uh, I ate fish and chips in Brighton when I was at Boss. And there you go. In school, in Boss, it's true. We have, we have fish and chips on Friday, but this is just. I think I ate fish and chips too, but I don't remember. Yeah. We have it in school, but this is mainly for the experience of students, so they can say, I had fish and chips. <laughs> All right. So, I went on a camp with my school, like, to Yorkshire, yep. and, like, we had the fish and chips. There you go. You see, it's like, oh, eat fish and chips, fish and chips, fish and chips. Fish and chips. In my life, I think I ate fish and chips once. Like, <laughs> like here, fish and chips, like, are, like, are not, like, famous, but, like, in England, but like it's normal. You can eat like um, fi like fish to in the oven with chips. It's different, I think, in other countries. But the fish is nice, you know, and the chips are nice. But here, it's just like <laughs> like <laughs> lots of fat. Yeah. Neil, and what is for you the most famous food for Britain in besides my, fish and chips? In my opinion. Yes. Um. Crumbled eggs. In my think. opinion. This will sound very strange because I eat a lot of different food. I don't really think there is British food. When I think of British food, I think of like a roast dinner, like roast beef, roast potatoes, vegetables. Turkey, great. maybe. Turkey. Turkey only at Christmas. Uh, yeah, well. Maybe, like, but, but really, in the UK, if you, if you have been to the UK, like if I wanted to... Not, not now because of quarantine, it's difficult, but if I wanted to, I can eat Italian food, Thai, Indian, Chinese, Mexican. Yeah, here too. And do you eat uh, min sauce? Which? Min sauce. Because uh, some people say that in English, in England, everybody eats min sauce with turkey or something like this. I don't know what min sauce is. Me neither. What is it? Me too. <laughs> Such sauce that isn't good for somebody. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. So the answer is okay. no. I don't eat it because I don't know what it is. Leanne? Um, I just wanted to say that when I googled um, British food, English food, everywhere they were standing English breakfast and then fish and chips and then food time. And this, they were pretty old. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think the most common food in uh, Britain is Italian food, Chinese food, and Indian food. Indian? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's because Britain is very multicultural. So, like in Brighton, there are many, many Italian people, there are many Spanish people, there are many people from all over the world who have restaurants, which is perfect for me because I can eat all of this food. Yeah. Even Leanne and Thies, we have German food, you know, you, you can find food from Germany. Especially around Christmas, when we have Christmas markets, you can always find German food. Like what? Like sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And glue wine. Oh, yes. And um, schnitzel. Schnitzel is Bavarian, is it? Or is it German? Uh, I yeah, think it's German, I think. German. Yes. Um, yeah, you can find lots of things. Even... Um, I, I just googled mint sauce. I can share my screen so everyone can see it. Okay, because I don't know what it is. Oh, mint. A mint sauce. Yes. I yes. Ah. All right. Uh, okay, so mint Sauce. I was like mint sauce. I was like, what's mint sauce? Yeah, like it was like um I am um, mint Swiss. sauce is something that you would have on your roast dinner. And usually we would only eat a roast dinner on a Sunday. 
but yeah, it's not it's not super popular, but people do have it. Okay, we need to move on. This is very interesting. We need to move next to Anastasia, who's going to tell us about the royal family. So I'm going to mute everybody. Um, I'm going to unmute Anastasia. Hi, Anastasia. Hi. So I wanted to talk about the royal family, and I'm going to start with some photos of Queen Elizabeth. Then. Um, Queen Elizabeth II and Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, born in 21 April 1926, is the Queen of the United, in, United Kingdom and the other uh, Commonwealth uh, realms. Elizabeth was born, was born in London, the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York, later King George and Queen Elizabeth, and she was educated privately at home. Her, fa her father ascended the throne on the abdication of his brother, King Edward, in 1936, from which time she was her uh, presumptive. The Queen has ruled for longer than any other monarch in British history, becoming a much loved and respected figure across the globe. Her extraordinary uh, reign has seen her travel more widely than other, uh, any other monarch, uh, undertaking many historic overseas visits. Known for a sense of duty and uh, devotion to a life of service, uh, she has been an important figurehead for the UK and Commonwealth uh, during time of enormous social change. Her Majesty uh, continued to carry out a full program of engagements, from visits to charities and schools, to hosting visiting heads of state, to leading the nation of remembrance and celebratory events, all supported by other members of the royal family. The Queen sees public and voluntary service as one of the most important elements of her work. The Queen has links as a royal patron or president with over um, 600 charities, military, uh, military uh, association, professional bodies and public service organizations. These, ve um, these vary from well-established international charities to smaller bodies working in a specialist area on a local basis only. Uh, on her 21st birthday, in a speech broadcast on the radio from Cape Town, the Queen, uh, then Princess Elizabeth, dedicated her life to a service on, on the of Commonwealth. Her patrons and charities cover a wide range of issues, from opportunities for young people, the preservation of wildlife, and the environment, having her majesty as a royal patron or president provides vital publicity, publicity for, the, for the work of these organizations and allows their enormous achievement and contributions to society to be recognized. Uh, then I want to talk about uh, um, the royal family. Here there are some photos of them. So, uh, the royal family. Charles, the Prince of Wales, uh, was born on the 14th of November 1948. He is uh, heir apparent to the British throne as the eldest son of Queen Elizabeth II. She has been Duke of Cornwall and Duke of uh, Roth I don't know how to read this. Say, uh, since 1952, and he is the oldest and longest serving uh, apartment apparent in British history. He is also the longest serving Prince of Wales having held the title since 1958. Then there's Prince, Prince William, uh, Duke of Cambridge, um, that, were, that was born on the 21 June of 1982, and is a member of the British royal family. He's the eldest son of Charles, Prince of Wales, and Diana, Prince of, Princess of Wales. Since birth, he has been second in the line of succession uh, of the British throne. Prince William is married to Kate Middleton, officially known as Catherine, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge, and they have three children, Prince George, Prince Charlotte, and Prince Louis. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, uh, was born on the 15th of September 1984, and he's the younger, younger son of Charles, Prince of Wales, and Diana, Princess of Wales, and is sixth in the line of succession to the British throne. Harry was educated at Weybury School, Girls School and Eton College. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry officially resigned from the royal family and st uh, stopped using their titles on April 1st. The couple initially made an announcement on January 8th about taking a step back from their tenure roles within the royal family, which came as a shock to many. 
Then, uh, what does the royal family do? Uh, the members of the royal family support the queen in her, ma in her many state and national duties, as well as carrying out, uh, as carrying out important work in the areas and public uh, charitable service, and helping the strengthen national, national unity and stability, those who undertake official duties and members of the queen's close family, her children, grandchildren, and their spouses, and the queen's cousins. Uh, and their spouses. Every year, the royal family, as a whole, uh, as a whole carries out uh, 2,000 official engagements to, throughout the UK and worldwide. These engagements may include official state responsibilities. The members of the royal family often carry out the uh, official duties of the UK and abroad, where the Queen cannot be present in person. The Prince of Wales and the Princess uh, Royal, for example, may present. Uh, members of the um, of the public with their owners and investors when official events such as rap, uh, rece receptions, state, ban state banquets, and garden parties are held. The royal family supports the queen in making her guests welcome. Members of the royal family also often represent the queen and the nation in Commonwealth and other countries uh, at events such as state funerals uh, or national festivities or through longer visits uh, to the strength, uh, to strengthen Britain's diplomatic and economic relationship uh, relations. Then there's like a lot of other things, but I don't know if I can say it because it would take too much time. I don't know. Anastasia? Um, I don't know if I can read it all because I it would take I would take like uh, much time. So yeah. So we have some questions. Yeah. All right. That's very interesting. Anastasia, I didn't know half of this as well. All right, guys. Anastasia. Thank you, Anastasia. Okay, guys. Michelle has to go, so let's quickly take a photograph before she leaves. Arsen. Arsen. Hello. Hello, Arsen. Hello, Arsen. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can't see you. All right. Let's take a quick picture, and then Michelle has to leave. Okay. So today we will do British poses like this. I have to press the button. Are you ready? One, two, <laughs> Thank you, guys. Remember, Masha, there is no session tomorrow, so next time will be on Monday. Okay, thank so you. Quickly, Masha, before you go, do you have any special requests for next week activities? Um, a dessert day. A dessert day? Hmm, I will write it down. Oh, it will be quite interesting. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> See you later, Masha. Have a good weekend. Bye, Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Any questions for Anastasia about the royal family? No. Yes, Alison? Yes, I think. I didn't meet you. Uh, I just, I just want to say that we have a holiday from today because, like, it's uh, we have a holiday for uh, of the men's today in Kazakhstan. What's your question? And, What's the question? Ah, uh, uh, no, I don't have a question. Oh, okay. Thank you, Asen. Uh, Max, we are going to go to Max next, who is going to tell okay. us about British architecture. I've just seen the time, guys, the time is going so fast. Okay. Yes, it is. Anastasia, thank you very much. All right, we're going to go to Max. Uh, okay. Let's just mute everybody. Can I share screen? Of course. Just one moment, please, Max, so I can unmute you. All right, Max, you are now the presenter. Okay. London's architecture. Wait, because something isn't working. Okay. You probably know uh, such famous buildings in London, like Houses of Parliament in here, with famous Big Ben. And I've got uh, that the Big Ben is the bell inside this tower. Mm. 
and Westminster Abbey. These are examples of Gothic style. My favorite is Natural History Museum, mixture of Gothic revi revival and 20th century architecture. Wow. 12th century. It's really great. When I visited it, uh, there was a big dinosaur, but now there is a whale. It's interesting. Wow. There are also many other interesting buildings like Buckingham Palace or Tower of London that was a pr first that was a prison and then that was a palace of king and or queen with Tower Bridge that is in here and I like very much this Tower Bridge because it's very interesting but for me the best is the modern architecture Famous cucumber that is famous from his this thing that this tower and my favorite the shard. The shard is the tallest building in whole Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Max. One moment, guys. Let me unmute. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions for Max? No. no. Have you seen the Shard, Max? Has anybody seen the Shard in London? No, I haven't seen the Shard because I was earlier. You know, um, it's the tallest building in London, but really it's quite small. Yes, <laughs> the Shard is all from glass and iron. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting all right guys shall we move to the next person because time is running out the next person we have tease this should be interesting guys we're gonna learn about british politics one moment please tease hi tease hi okay okay so i will tell you something about the british political system so what type of political system is in Great Britain? It's the constitutional monarchy. Yes, that. And what is it? What is a constitutional monarchy? So that means that there's a monarch, but the real power rests with the government and the parliament. So the monarch is used to have much more power, but a couple of laws reduce their power. So yes, uh, the power rests with the government and the parliament um, but why is the uh, monarch still there so the monarch is the head of the state the monarch represents Peace. yes Peace. it's monarch okay monarch. monarch the monarch represents the state and he or she has to give the royal royal assent on bills passed by the parliament he or she can reject it but nobody did this since queen anna about the Scottish militia uh, in 1707. The monarch is formally approved the appointment of prime ministers, but the monarch could refuse it. So the government in Great Britain, uh, well, yes. so it is divided in three sections, exec executive, legislature, and judiciary i don't know how to pronounce it judiciary okay judiciary the executive branch is made of the prime ministers and the cabinet and it is their job to lead the government it is their job to propose new legislate legislature legislation mm -hmm. or laws so legislature a legislature is made of the two houses of parliament the house of common and the House of Lords. Here they discuss about new le legis legislation. The House of Commons is made of MPS who are elected by the people and they have to decide in the name of the people. The House of Lord Lords is made of peers who are appointed by the Queen or the King for live, uh, for live on its advice for the Prime Minister. They have to Specialists, they have to be specialists in certain areas so that they can improve uh, legislation. 
So the judiciary, judiciary, um, yes, it is comprised of the system of courts. It realizes the laws with, which are passed down by the parliament and the ministries. The government is divided in 25 different departments, which are the ministries and each one he headed by a minister, by the prime minister cabinet who choose them. Okay, I'm done. Thank you very much, Thies. Um, one second, please. Thank you, Thies. I'm chatting in the chat box. Sorry, Neil, but I can't go. Oh. All right, bye, Arsene. Bye, Arsene. Bye, everyone. Have a good bye. day. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. And have a nice day, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. Any, any questions for Thies? No questions for Tis. All right, let's move on. Let's see, I'm going faster now because I realized the time. I'm sorry, guys. So, the next we have is Alexandra, who's going to talk about British music. Please, one moment, Alexandra. Okay, Alexandra, you are now the presenter. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, Okay, uh, the British music. History of the British Invasion. Uh, in the mid-1960s, uh, rock and pop musicians from the United Kingdom became popular in America. This became known as the British Invasion. Scenes of the invasion began in early 1963 with the Beatles. But soon, many other British bands, including The Who and The Rolling Stones, became just as popular. British bands began combining various American and British genres in what became known as the Mersey Beats. This is a mix of rock and roll, um, doo-wop, uh, skiffle, and air and B. Uh, am I saying it right? Air no, and B. Big. Um, this was a major cause of the ending of of the career of Air and B. Artists should be cheaper uh, and temporarily decreased the success of artists such as Fats Domino and Elvis Presley. At the time of the invasion, the amount of girl vocal groups decreased, de decreased and the careers of a free African Americans and women in the music business were the major. The British invasion also had an overwhelming impact of ten tens in the 1960s. Um, they worshipped this bands and many wanted electric guitars um, and other various instruments. After President Kennedy assassination, the moral of many Americans was low. The British invasion um, lived the spirit of many jobs, uh, but many parents did not approve of this new band and the style of music they were bringing. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I can't see the... Um, I can see it. We can see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't see. You see? Do you, uh, do you want me to finish? Uh, no, it's not finished. Can, can you see it? Yes, okay. I'm moving. Sorry. Then, times usually between teenagers, there will be debates over which British bands were. Mm. Uh, were better. This showed the passion uh, that some felt for this band. Some famous British bands of this time is included the ever so popular Beatles, the, the Who, the Rolling Stones and the Kinks. Um, British popular music. British popular music can be seen to originate in the 60th and 7th 17th centuries uh, with the arrival of Borset Ballad, which were sold cheaply and in great numbers until the 19th century. Forms of popular music, including folk music, jazz, pop, and rock music, have particularly flourished in Britain since the 12th, 12th, 
20th century. Um, 90s, um, 96, 1960s. Uh, it was important to establish British youth and popular music culture was a key factor in development that led to the British invasion of the mid 1960s. A musical movement of the mid 1960s, the British invasion was composed of British rock and roll and beat groups whose popularity spread to the United States. Uh, the classic British music has been a mixture of Ars Nova polyphony of the early stage of music in Europe. Early music forms in Britain include highly distinct music forms such a continuous and close anti caro uh, Celtic chant and medieval music. Okay, I finished. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, one second. Thank you, Alexandra. Well done. So much information. I didn't know a lot of this. Does anybody have any questions for Alexandra about British music? No questions. All right, guys, we are going to move next to Bianca, who will tell us about British fashion. Okay. Bianca, uh, Bianca. Um, sorry, sorry. Here we are. Okay. You are now the presenter. Uh, wait a moment, please. Okay. British Fashion by Bianca. Britain has a long history of producing textiles, especially wool. During industrial, industrial revolution, textile was the leading industry. Due to rapid industrialization, Modern mechanized production methods and economic de development. Population rose and so did the demand for clothes and linen even abroad. The price of, te of textile as and clothing de decre decreased so even poor people were able to buy them. England was the birthplace of elegant clothes, especially for men. Frack, wedding goat, thing, smoking, ties, gloves, dandy look. So appeared the first English stylist for very, for very rich people. Along, along with the beat generation, freedom, colored clothes, boys with long hair, girls with short hair. Mary Quant began fashion revolution with miniskirt and a new look. Twiggy was chosen by Mary Quant to, uh, to wear her miniskirt as model. Punk refused fashion, but the, them, them sables create a fashion style that influenced the other styles. Scottish fashion, tweed are rose woolen fabric, belted plaid, Fly played, killed, dressed tartans. One tartan for each clan. A tartan is a design consisting of two or more alternating colored stripes, which combine vertically and horizontally to form a rapid checkered pattern. McLaughlin tartans. Oh, nice. Fancy English hats. <laughs> Champion of fashion, the Queen Elizabeth II. Oh my goodness. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Bianca. I learned a lot there. Thank One second, where are you? Um, thank you, Bianca. <laughs> thank you for showing me my family's tartan. I actually, I didn't know that this was... <laughs> This is the McLaughlin tartan. I didn't know what, what it looked like. Thank you very much. Any questions for Bianca? Yes, Blanca. Hello. Okay. Next, we are going to move to Andrea. Okay, Andrea. I'm going to mute okay. everybody. Just a second, Andrea. I need to unmute. I'm confused because you have so many different things. Okay, here you are, Andrea. You are the presenter. I'm going to share my screen. Sorry if it's taking a bit long. All right. 
Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Holiday locations in the UK. Oh, wait. Uh, this presentation contains the London Eye, the Big Ben, and the Trafalgar Square. The London Eye. A lot of people visit London to see the London Eye. The London Eye is the most uh, popular tourist attraction in the Uni uh, United Kingdom. It has over 3.75 million visits. Uh, the Big Ben uh, is the nickname uh, for the Great Bell of the Striking Clock. The official name of the tower is uh, tower in which Big Ben is located was ori uh, originally the clock tower, but it was renamed Elizabeth Tower in 2012. Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square is uh, is a public square in central London. Its name comes from the Battle of Trafalgar. The site of Trafalgar Square ha uh, had been uh, a significant landmark since the the 13th century. The 52 meter Nelson column uh, at its center, center is guarded by four lion statues. The square has been used for community gather, gatherings and political demonstrations. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Andrea. Um, thank you, Andrea. And of course, if you ever come to bus, you will visit all of these places. So just remember that, okay? Okay. Any questions for Andrea? No. Guys, I am going to say goodbye, but I don't really mean it. Because, ah, okay. No, I just gave it away on the recording. Blanca is going to show her presentation next, but because she is sharing a video, there will be copyright. So I'm going to stop the recording, and then Blanca will do her presentation, okay? So guys, thank you all. Thank you all for being here today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend because it's a long weekend here in the UK. We don't have any any work tomorrow, so I will see you on Monday. Bye. 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 Bye.